YouTube, it's Daniel the Rocket Noob, and we are back once again building the Quest Superbird model rocket, and today we are going to cut some tubes. Uh, just as a recap, I have a need to cut a piece of this BT-55 tube for two reasons. One, I'm going to make a coupler to slide into our body tube, and I'm also going to use a couple of quarter inch long uh, basically sections, just little rings of uh, BT-55 to shim up uh, the centering rings that I'm going to be using. And there are a number of ways you can cut a tube. You can either uh, wrap a piece of cardstock or paper around the tube where you, and hold it in place and very carefully with a hobby knife uh, turn the tube and cut it and try not to cut into the the cardstock or just try to get a straight line. Um, Another thing you can use are these. These are it's an, a series of uh, tube cutting guides from Estes. These are actually pretty nice. Um, they just slide over the tube and they essentially lock into place. And then you can use a hobby knife right in there and turn as you cut. And it cuts a nice uh, straight line. Um, they're also nice if you want to mark a line around a body tube. Uh, the one thing that I wish about them is that I wish I had a set in metal uh, because a really sharp hobby knife can um, can actually gouge into these and most of these are already gouged. Um, so I tend to use them a little less frequently for cutting tubes unless I'm cutting something that doesn't have to really have a nice edge. So what we're going to use to cut our tube is this. This is called a Kuhn Tube Cutter. Uh, it's a device that was created a long time ago by a uh, model rocketeer known as uh, Colonel Howard Kuhn. And he's one of those figures that's kind of a big deal in the first few decades of model rocketry. He did a lot of stuff with scale modeling and competition rocketry and created a few... Um, few devices to aid in construction and this is one of them. This is a device that will help you cut a tube to a specific length and uh, with a hopefully with a factory edge, a nice straight edge without any jagged bits. Um, and it's very simple. You can get a Kuhn tube cutter from North Coast Rocketry either through Apogee Components, I believe, or uh, eRockets.biz. It does require a little bit of assembly. Um, I actually built mine myself. You can make them. They're pretty simple. Uh, I wanted one that was... Uh, I, th I can't really tell from the photos online, but I think the North Coast Rocketry one is a little smaller. I wanted something that would um, take a slightly larger tube. And I, honestly, I, I just didn't want to wait for shipping. Uh, the North Coast Rocketry one costs about 14 15 bucks, And with all the parts, I, I don't think I saved much more than maybe a dollar or two. But I just wanted to build one. Uh, so let me show you how it works. So essentially, I've got two um, boards. They're, I think, what is known as a, a hobby board. Uh, not hobby board. A project board. And it's basically hardwood. Um, and they are essentially glued together at a 90 degree angle with some wood glue. And then uh, I took a, uh, a square, this Crayola square that I've had since I was a kid, marked a line straight up and down on one end and then straight across. And I've got this this wooden, sorry, they've got this metal ruler and the metal ruler has a cork backing just like the one that I use when building model rockets. And that enabled me to use some uh, wood glue and glue it down with zero right in line with that uh, line I've got marked there. And then I took a razor saw cut a notch right here on the line. This wooden block ena enables me to set the length of tube I want to cut. So if I want to cut a 5 inch tube, I set the wooden block right up against 5 inches there and I clamp it into place. And then finally I've got a blade. Now a razor blade will work but the uh, razor saw made a cut that was a little, a little narrow, a little wider than a razor blade, and so it tends to wobble. So I use um, these utility knife blades, which are just a little, a uh, little thicker, because I don't want it wiggling around. Uh, you do have to do this carefully, or else uh, you might end up with a less than perfect cut. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut about a two-inch section off 
for a tube coupler, and then I'll do the uh, centering ring shims. Um, because all of these parts are going to be inside the rocket, they don't necessarily have to be perfect, except that on the bottom of the tube coupler, I will be gluing a bulkhead, and I want that to be nice and flush. So I'm going to make sure, just in case I don't get a perfect cut, uh, I'm going to do the tube coupler first so that at least I've got one edge that is perfect. Um, of course, if you're cutting and you, you have a, a slightly jagged edge, you can always sand it, but I don't really want to bother with that. All right, so uh, I think that is everything about the Kuhn tube cutter. I'm going to reset the camera and then uh, see if I can't get a decent shot of me actually cutting this tube. Okay, so first I'm going to cut a tube coupler, and I want about a two inch section, so I'm going to set the block at about two inches, and I'm just going to clamp it into place. Now, you usually want to have some support when you're cutting a tube, so it's a good idea, if you have one, to use a bit of tube coupler just to support your work. It just makes it less likely that the tube will bend as you're cutting, and so you're, you're more likely to get a nice straight cut. All right, so <clears throat> this is pretty straightforward. Now let's see here. Pick up the blade. Okay, so this is actually a smaller tube than I thought it was. So what I'm going to do is uh, when I cut a smaller tube on this thing, I, I just uh, basically shim it up with a book. All right, I have found a nice red book. And I'm just basically going to stick it right there and use that to prop up my tube. And I've used this blade a couple of times before, so it's not as sharp as it could be, but that's okay. I'm basically going to stick it on there. Let's see if I can't find a good spot here. Do what I can to guide the tube and keep it steady. Just turn and press. Don't feel like you need to press too hard. Anytime you're cutting something like this, um, it's best to just make more passes with less pressure so that you don't get off track. Ah, and we're done. And that's just about perfect. There's a little bit of a jagged edge. If I were using this to actually make a, uh, a shorter body tube, I could just sand that off. And that's about a two inch section right there. Now I just need about a quarter of an inch, two quarter inch pieces. And this might actually be tricky because that is such a short piece that I'm cutting. I'm a little nervous that I won't quite get a good job, get a good cut. But I'll try it. I'll try it anyway. Might be better in this case for me just to use the Estes tube cutter. All right. Yeah, that is a little tricky because I'm not getting enough support on the tube. Nope. I am not getting a straight cut. Okay. Let's see what happened is I started off here and I didn't keep the uh, tube well supported and by the time I got around to the other side I, the cut starts here and ends here and uh, that's no good. So even though I have already uh, partly cut through this I don't care because this is basically going to be glued onto the centering ring and um, it doesn't matter if it, it's partly cut through, the glue will hold everything together. It's just going to shim everything up. So let me find a hobby knife with a fresh blade. Boom, got one ring done. That's going to get glued around this, and that will be our centering ring. There we go. All right, all right. So that's a pretty clean cut. Uh, again, these don't have to be perfect. All right, so next what we'll do is we're gonna glue these guys in here uh, to make our centering rings, our final centering rings. Just to quickly show you, <clears throat> the next thing I would have done would be to cut a piece of this. This is a BT-50 tube, and it's uh, the right size for a 24 millimeter motor mount. 
Uh, as I said, I'd probably make this a D rocket. Well, there's a chance that it might fly just fine um, on E motors with, uh, without adding any nose weight, but I need to figure that out. Um, this is a motor tube from some Estes kit that I think uh, was smashed and there were only a few good parts. Um, and I could just use this. It's just a little too wide for our centering rings. It's a nice thick tube and this is just a piece of body tube. Um, I could just uh, sort of take a little bit of the paper out and use it and I might do that. But for our, the purposes of building a simulation, I'm going to just use this for the weight. All right, now that the ring shim things are cut out, I'm just going to glue the centering rings into them. And I'm just going to use a little bit of glue. It's not going to take very much. Just a thin layer is all it's going to take. Pop it over a centering ring and press it down. And that's all that it's going to take. thin layer of glue is probably better than a thick layer of glue. In any case, any excess is going to get squished out when you press the centering rings down into the shims like that. Not that it really matters, but I do want to wipe off any excess that gets on the outside. All right, my next step is I'm going to make a bulkhead for this coupler. And I'm basically going to use two pieces of wood, either a piece of basswood and a piece of balsa or two pieces of balsa. Uh, I'm going to cut, it, cut them out. There will be little circles that I'll cut out and I'll glue them together and then we will weigh them. Um, and we need to make a simulation. So what, what I want to do is I want to take all the parts that I have of the rocket, including the parts that I'm going to add, uh, you know, so I'm got this paper coupler instead of a plastic coupler and then I've got the two bulkhead pieces and I'll use a screw eye to attach the shock cord to the bulkhead. So I want to weigh all that. We want to make a simulation and that'll let us know if uh, our center of gravity is going to be too far aftward and uh, it'll also give us an idea of how big of a motor we can actually put in this thing. Again, I'm probably going to keep it simple and make it just a depowered rocket but um, you know, I'm always curious uh, as to how far I can push it, and um, so that's what we're going to do next. Mm -hmm.